Remember when I said that you missed the great housing crash of 2023? The data is coming in and coming together. It looks like a dip in home prices will be short-lived, and by the end of this year, we will likely see year-over-year numbers coming in flat or slightly positive. Wednesday, we heard from Powell and another rate hike went into place, bringing the Fed funds rate to the five and a quarter to five and a half range. That's the highest it's been since 2001. Do you remember what you were doing in 2001? I was a freshman in high school, so that was a very, very, very long time ago. Mortgage bonds actually improved on the news yesterday because of Powell's commentary that they may hold. This could be the last rate hike of the year, and they would pause at the remainder of the 2023 meetings. He also explained that the Fed understands that the job market is not as hot as it appears, which was well received by the markets. So now all eyes turn to the PCE report coming out tomorrow. Though we have to assume that Powell had that data before his press conference yesterday, I mean, right? Like, he, they gave him the info before. From what I'm reading, and based on the GDP numbers that came in today, it looks like the PCE will have very good news for us tomorrow, and I'm really hopeful that mortgage bonds and mortgage interest rates will react very, very well to the news. But back to my psychic skills. As interest rates climbed this year and then got stuck in that tree, many were expecting home prices to tank, right? They did dip, but then the inventory crisis kicked in. Even now that interest rates are at 7%, residential real estate manages to be back on its way up. Kay Schiller has posted gains on home prices for the last three consecutive months. Main numbers came in showing home prices up 0.7%. The year on year, year on year numbers are still negative and just slightly, like half a percent negative. But as these month over month gains continue, over the next few months, and definitely by the end of the year, we're really likely to show a small increase in home values. Meaning, when we compare home prices at the end of 2023 to the home prices at the end of 2022, we will see appreciation. Meaning, the bubble popped, no one screamed, and then it inflated back again. Oh, I shouldn't use the word inflated there. Um, I apologize. I was just talking about a balloon, you know, like in a, in a figurative sense or a bubble that fills up. Uh, but in a literal terms, if we take a cold, hard look at supply and demand, it is very clear why home prices are ticking back up. We know that home builders were underbuilding for a long time. We've talked about that over and over in this weekly update. We also know that folks who want a new house are trapped in their current house by interest rates. Isn't that kind of ironic? The Fed raises rates to decrease the cost of goods, including housing. And as a result of higher interest rates, many homeowners who would have contributed to the resale market don't because they don't want to deal with the higher interest rates that the Fed has created. So they add to the inventory problem, which makes the competition for the few homes on the market even tougher, which drives the prices of homes up. The number of homes on the market less than one month is currently at 76% of the entire inventory. So we have to get real. This is good news for homeowners who purchased in the last few years, right? Even those who purchased at the height of the madness. And I know there's some hardcore, good-hearted realtors who watch this every week and were genuinely concerned for some of their clients who bought at the peak of the madness. Kathleen, I'm not looking at you or using your name here specifically. But you guys, those clients will be okay because by the end of this year, their home value will start appreciating slowly, not like we saw in previous years, but they won't be underwater. It's not as good of news for the people who've been sitting on the sidelines waiting for home prices to tank before they jump in and take action. So even as interest rates come down to 5.5%, this is what we have to get real about. 5.5% mortgage rates definitely help affordability. But the drop in rates will instantly be counteracted by the jump in demand. That won't help affordability. As more buyers qualify again and re-enter the market, the new construction supply is not likely going to be enough to keep up. And the resale market is still going to be fairly locked up by people who don't want to abandon their interest rate in the threes or even the twos. Then there's the boomers. They hold one third of the real estate in our country. And half of them bought before 2000. You know what that means? They likely have a shit ton of equity in that house. They've seen record rates of appreciation over that time span. They might have even paid the mortgage off. 
So they're not likely going to want to deal with this current rate climate. They're smart. They're older. They've seen many cycles of interest rates and the housing market. They're probably going to wait this one out. So the inventory problem gets worse. So my parting advice remains, stay in the game and keep your clients in the game too. Without any pressure, they don't have to act now, but they should keep in close contact with you and with their lender. They should keep their file current, even if they aren't haven't seen a house of interest in months, even if they aren't happy about the proposed mortgage payments based on current interest rates, even if they aren't going to buy this year, if they are going to buy ever, they have to keep a pulse on this market because it is the weirdest market we've ever seen. Who knows what's around the corner? Even this psychic gets thrown for a loop these days.